So there's one thing that you can do, they can instantly make your photographs look a little bit more professional. And the great thing about it is it's simple and it won't cost you a penny in any extra photography equipment. And that's what we're talking about in today's video. Hi, I'm David and welcome to today's video. Now, when I started photography at first, one thing I always did was compare my photographs to professional ones I'd see online. I'd always try and work out what's the difference between my images and theirs, and how is it when I shot a similar landscape to theirs or a similar subject of some kind, theirs look a lot different. And one of the big things you'll notice is how much professional photographers use a very shallow depth of field. And what this basically does is it blurs the background of the image and it allows whatever subject you're shooting to stand out from the background. Now, the great thing is, is that this not only helps your composition of your image, but it's also like a lot more light into your camera. And what I'm gonna talk about today is there's four simple things you can do to get that blur in the background and to get yourself in a shallow depth of field in your images. So the best way to achieve a nice shallow depth of field and blur the background of your images is to use as wide an aperture as you can on your camera lens. Now what you might find at first is that if you're actually shooting in automatic mode, that a lot of your images are in focus. Now the reason for this is that automatic mode doesn't know exactly what you're shooting, so the error on the side of caution is going to put more of the image in focus than you perhaps want to. And what that does is it just basically gives you a very narrow aperture to achieve that. So obviously what you want to do to blur that background is widen the aperture as much as possible. Now, if you're not really sure how to do that on your camera, there's a really simple thing you can do and that is switch your camera to portrait mode. And what you'll normally find is on the dial on your camera, there'll be like a little symbol that's like a woman in a hat. And what that does, if you switch it to there, is that's gonna widen the aperture on your lens and that's gonna allow you to get a bit of blur and depth of field. Now, if you're a bit more comfortable in either shooting an aperture priority mode or going to manual, then what you'll find is that the aperture is always um, represented by an F number. And what you'll find is a really good lens might have an F number as low as 2.8 or maybe 1.8, but you don't really need anything quite as low as that to achieve a blur. Just put it as low as you can and that'll let more light into your image as well. If you start doing that, you'll instantly start seeing a much more shallow depth of field in your photographs. The second thing you can do to achieve a bit more uh, blur in your pictures and help your subject stand out is to increase the distance in your subject and the background. So for example, if you've got someone standing in front of a nice sort of garden or perhaps in front of a wall or something else like that, then what you might want to do is have that nice and blurred out in the background and have your subject nice and sharp and in focus. Now what you can do is you have them standing as close as they can to that background or in close to that wall, wherever it may be, then you're probably gonna to struggle to really get that nicely blurred out and that nice bokeh effect. What you wanna do is actually get them to take a few steps forward and separate the distance between themselves and the background. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to just blur that out a lot nicer because your depth of field will move forward to where the person is standing because that's where your lens is gonna focus on. Now, another thing you can do to help you get that nice bloody effect is to use as long a focal length as you can. Now, what I mean by focal length is how much the zoom is on your lens. So for example, what you might have is a starter lens, it might be something like between 34 millimeters and 70 millimeters. So if you put it up to the 70 millimeters and zoom in as much as possible, this will help you again blow out the background. Now, this isn't necessarily something you need to do, but what it basically does is it helps you when you've got a nice sort of wide lens and a sort of really small focal length and something like 24 millimeters or something like that, it's gonna get a lot more of the background and image in there. Whereas if you zoom in as much as possible, where that means you need to take a few steps back from the subject you're shooting, then again, it's gonna allow you to get a nice shallow depth of field and really blow out that background and give it that nice bokeh effect. So the fourth and final thing on this list is actually using photo editing software to blur the background of your images. And what this allows you to do is if you've maybe already got a little bit of depth of field in your image, but you want a little bit more to really again just help your subject pop, is just highlight the subject itself and it allows you then to blur the background while keeping the subject nice and sharp and in focus. 
Now, the reason I put this one last is because I don't think it's always the best way to go when you want to blur the background of your images. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first thing is, I don't really think that the results are ever quite as good when you blur the background using Photoshop. But also as well, as a rule of thumb, to save yourself more work. I always think it's better to do as much as you can in the camera itself. So for example, if you actually do have a nice wide aperture that you can use, if you can get the subject to stand a bit further away from the background, then you should absolutely do that first, rather than just shooting everything in focus and then trying to blur it again back in Photoshop later on. The good thing about Photoshop though, is that what you can do is if you can find that, you know what, you've maybe put yourself in a fairly high aperture just to make sure everything's in focus and sharp and you're not blurring your subject too much, then what you can always use Photoshop to do is just give it that nice polish, just make it a wee bit bloodier in the background. But as I say, I'd always try one of the other things first. So there it is, there are four things you can do that can instantly add a bit of depth of field and blur to the background of your images and make them look that bit more professional. Now, if you've got any other uh, tips yourself or any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you did like this video, please do like and subscribe.